Hi all. Yet another fascinating attacking chess game by David Grosvenor. So Leela ID triple one three one playing black against Ethereal ten point eight eight. Let's have a look at this game. So the time control is the fast and furious forty moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. The book moves given in the Sicilian defence territory. So he takes knight takes end of book here. Leela chooses knight f six. We have knight c3, d6, f3, e5, knight b3, bishop e6, knight d5. This has all been seen before, very well trodden territory. Bishop e7, bishop e3, black castles until here, this position. So white actually played c3. This is a bit unusual according to chess based line book. Queen d2 is a popular move here it seems for example bishop takes this position should be about even so what's the problem with c3 or are there any exploitable downsides of c3 here is it somehow uh, got an issue has it somehow got an issue bishop takes e takes we have knight a5 so energetic play from Lula. we have queen d3 now if knight takes a5 Queen takes a5, hits d5, and the pawn's pinned, so there's no c4. Uh, so let's say bishop e2, then there's knight takes d5, big advantage to black. So say white is forced to play bishop c4, it looks a little bit awkward. b5, this position should be black's reaching full equality. So that's not a very good scenario here. Uh, so that's on queen d3. Sorry, that's on knight takes a5. Queen d3 was what was played actually. So we can see the perks. There's no immediate pressure put on d5 here with queen d3. There's potential for rook d1 supporting d5. Knight takes b3 is played. And now knight d7. So taking the pressure off d5. Uh, but wanting a strategic bishop exchange. You can see that with the pawn on f3 and this pawn here. That's white might be vulnerable now on the dark squares this looks like a great positional move for bishop g5 pretty thematic queen c2 bishop g5 the bishop drops back this position is just uh, if anybody's better it's going to be black here this this looks like a very nice position uh, for the dark square play white without the bishop there and just compromised on dark square so white ret retains that dark square bishop and uh, something like bishop takes, by the way, it's not worth. Uh, it look it looks as though a seven might be under fire, but there's always going to be b six, so that's not really a threat here. Uh, it, uh, I would not say that's a threat at all. So knight f six is played. Now that does hit d five here, and white counterattacks well with bishop d three, tying the knight down to h seven for a moment. Now g6 renewing knight takes d5. Now rook d1 indirectly defending d5. Because if knight takes d5, then there's bishop takes g6, exposing an attack on d5. This position is actually quite favourable to white. So here uh, uh, we have actually uh, king g7. So renewing knight takes d5 now. Uh, and now white explicitly protects. The d5 pawn with bishop c4. We have h5. h4, bishop drops back to h6, white castles, knight d7. And it looks as though white is slightly fragile on dark squares, and this pawn might be a liability later. At this point, we can observe there's some vulnerabilities. Rook f, e1, a5, as though making potentially a nice home for c5 later. That could be handy. Bishop b5. We have king h7. Rook a1. And now f5. Queen e2. Knight f6. Again hitting d5 now. That's protected. Rook f7. Rook e1. Rook e7. So this maneuver bypassing the bishop. Which was eyeing e8. Now, black might be in the position to play e4, but there's always 
the concern of bishop d4 as well though the d4 square will be compromised c4 so e4 is a bit double-edged at the moment so Lila is content with rook c8 here on e4 bishop d4 is slightly annoying annoying uh, here though black still is okay here but uh, it might not be the best timing so we see rook c8 queen d3 and it's here that e4 is played with tempo on the queen queen d4 if f takes f takes this position is very nice for black looking at taking on f2 further weakening white on the dark squares uh, for example this can lead to real trouble knight takes f2 uh, here this is very awkward uh, but even worse is rook takes check because of bishop e3 pinning the queen or king takes there's check first and then bishop e3 winning the queen so there are some disaster scenarios so let's imagine king takes f2 bishop g7 black ends up being uh, uh, with a big advantage here this this kind of scenario look at the dark squares so this is all pretty evidence when we come to look at f takes e4 here uh, yeah so ideas of knight g4 are just too vicious so we have queen d4 trying to keep things calm uh, now rook e5 and this might seem pretty strange at first glance why put the rook on e5 well it is blunting the diagonal and the rook is kind of a target though you might think to the dark square bishop <laughs> curiously though we have this lunge with queen a7 here as though the a5 pawn might be a liability or b7 leader is only concerned about b7 not concerned about a5 here with this move and it introduces the idea of e3 so white doesn't want e3 because then there might be a squish of f4 later after that so the a5 pawn is clearly not worth it we have bishop d4 doesn't this just win an exchange bishop f4 exchange sacrifice and also a5 but who cares about a5 well if you're human you want to go for the king so we hit we see now uh king f1 this looks very strange king f1 as though there's an evacuation already why is this if we look at this position what about just bishop takes you might ask well on bishop takes this is very interesting say the queen comes back to protect h4 among other things f4 threatens e3 and say the queen wanted to provoke that with that cunningness then the queen can actually be shut out with rook c5 and i'll show you a scenario now this position with queen takes h4 coming is uh, pretty dangerous among other things so this scenario in fact is very good for black the exchange down but uh, with a big advantage so this whole taking on e5 it seems as though black's doing quite well here if we want to avoid the queen swinging back and just protect here bang knight takes d5 rook c5 keeping the queen in siberia <laughs> and then there's the threat of queen takes h4 and if white tries this it doesn't really help much this is really quite a vicious attack if white doesn't give up the queen here uh, then let's see what happens check check and then basically e2 is loose so there's rook takes c4 winning e2 so giving up the queen <laughs> that's a really bad scenario so all of these very very bad scenarios uh, occur it seems after bishop takes e5 so it seems ethereal trusted black there so trying to improve the position before maybe taking on e5 but leela's also trying to improve the situation with the exchange sack with rookie rook f8 now the exchange sack is accepted here so what's the real damage of this position <laughs> well yeah there is a lot of dark square pressure already white tries rook e3 here and we have knight g8 hitting h4 
and white does seem to be pretty confused here about what to do with rook e2 queen takes h4 queen f2 bishop g3 there seems to be a raging attack now after knight f6 rook takes a5 now knight g4 yeah with the horrible threat of knight h2 check winning the queen for example and if takes here this is just immune because of check that's also pretty vicious absolutely crushing so uh, after knight g4 rook c2 was played f4 we have king e2 bishop f2 look at these dark squares queen g3 yeah if <laughs> it it just looks like a really devastating uh, attacking position here white tries c5 queen takes g2 and white is shedding pawns this end game scenario knight e3 is welcomed by Leela. Leela's actually got two connected at least <laughs> well actually potentially four connected pass pawns but these two will do in the short run it's absolutely a one position knight takes d5 king e2 the game has ended here uh, let's have a look at an example continuation so adjudicate is a win for black if bishop e3 for example and then we can just play f3 check and, and use the two connected pass pawns to crash through yep so this was a fantastic he played sicilian defense with uh it seems one non-book move just one c3 and Leela starts to do that you know major strategic exchange and then builds up a position where a dark square exchange sacrifice becomes possible the a5 pawn just was an irrelevant distraction it seemed just of no significance and black's attack on the dark squares was just unstoppable after i hope you got something from that uh, there's very very instructive play i believe in these games for how to play these types of positions so I hope you got something from it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much